What's going on everyone? In this video, I'll be demonstrating with my partner James on a topic or a technique in Anastasio Khalid that we refer to as bridging. Uh, now there might be a different name for this in different systems, so I'm just going to kind of show you briefly what bridging is and kind of explain why we would do it. So anytime I'm in a situation, it could be empty hand or it could be with weapons, if let's say we're working off the cross here and I do a series of block check counters, left right, left right, left right, it doesn't matter, but Basically, I, I have an angle that I'm working with, naturally. And if it came down to it, I'd like to work with what I have. But sometimes it's not ideal, or I just don't want to be here. So by me bridging, there's different kinds of bridging, but basically I'm going from the outside to maybe, let's say, the outside on the other hand. So I'm bridging from hand to hand. Or I might be going from the outside to the inside, and I'm bridging on the inside here. In some cases, we have bridges that go around, bridges that go... Uh, different levels up and down, but generally at an entry level, bridging is going from one arm to the other arm, whether it's outside to outside, outside to inside, inside to outside, or inside to inside. Okay, so what I'm looking to do right now is sometimes we force the bridge because we know that there's gonna be a set reaction. So in this particular situation, I know that James has to block a certain way with his left hand due to the block check counter I applied on his right hand. And this can look in, in various ways. I'm just going to keep it towards the structure so you can see it a little bit more clearly. But that cross comes and I block, I check, and when I check, just to go over this very quickly as well, I'm checking to see what I can do, when can I do it. So once I check here and I get the right cues to say, I'm going to get the reaction I want, now I can proceed to my regular bridge. So I'm going to strike with a hammer fist coming from my left shoulder and I'm going to strike it almost like an angle two. So I want this hand to react and I want it to grab. And to me, this is okay. But to James, he thinks that he has a shot at surviving now. But I want this connection because I already know that he's going to connect here, which is going to allow me to slip in between the arms, pass it off and hit him again. Okay, so. There's a particular timing that's required when you bridge. If you bridge very slowly, it might change the position, but when I come here, as soon as that grab happens, I wipe it off. Okay, so technically what we're looking at, I have a block, check, hammer fist here, then I take my left hand, which was trapping the right arm. I'm gonna bring it in between our hands here. I'm gonna slide it down in between, and I'm gonna pull it to my left to release the grip. And now on the outside of the left hand, I get hit with the hammer fist over time. Okay, so all in all, I'm going to block the counter. Right away, I take it from him. As soon as I feel that sensitivity, as soon as I feel that connection, I manipulate the position by bridging to the other hand. Okay, so like I said, sometimes I do this uh, bridging concept to get my opponent in a position that they don't expect that I'm ready for. I, he thinks he's okay, he thinks he can stop it, but as soon as he grabs that hand, I'm already there. I already know what to do. And most of the time, it's a physical stimulus, not a visual stimulus. I feel the grip, I feel his hands clamping on, and that's my signal to go. Not him raising his hand and me being able to see his hand coming towards me. It's physically getting that connection and then manipulating the position there. Okay? So, Sometimes what I like to do as well is if I need to bridge, if I work, let's say, off this block to counter once again, sometimes I need to bridge because my technique didn't work. And if this, is, if this isn't a recovery, if he grabs this and he's able to, let's say, jam it into my body, then I can't twist, I can't slip this off, push this off here. He can pin this to me and now he can reverse the situation. Now I'm at his mercy and I gotta learn how to break this grip first before I can free myself to do anything else. So in this case, in a kind of a recovery mode, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use bigger muscles. Hand to hand, we're pretty even, but in this position, James is actually gonna beat me. So I'm gonna use bigger muscle groups. So I'm gonna take my body and I'm gonna to turn to the left and I'm gonna point with my hand here. So once I have this twist, almost like I'm punching out. And very important when I do that, you can see that when he's trying to jam it this way, I'm gonna let him go this way. I'm not gonna fight him back and we're gonna kinda of run into each other. If he wants to give me pressure going this way, I'm just gonna redirect it. And that's gonna cause a little drag and I'll balance it. That's gonna allow me to get down here and go for almost like an arm drag to a grip release. And then I can start working my next techniques. So, 
I blocked your counter, I wanted to hit, I didn't get the chance, and he pins it into me. So now I need to go with the flow. I'm going in the direction he wants, I'm just gonna manipulate the path a little bit. And I'm gonna pull him down because he wants to stay connected with me, that's gonna be his problem. Twist it around, a key note here, my thumb is always pointing towards my partner, so I can rotate my wrist and allow an easier exit on the way out. Left hand up on the elbow here, towards the tricep, pull, push, and I reposition, get him a little bit more off balance, and then I can work from the back. Okay, so sometimes I want to, sometimes I need to. And then sometimes I can get a little bit creative and go on an angle that he can't really see or he doesn't know. So the last uh, bridge that I want to demonstrate for you guys is what we call a back bridge or a back transfer. So what that means is instead of being in front of him and working from the outside inside angle concept, whether it's inside, outside, I'm actually going to work behind him. And this can be done from a wrist, uh, from a, a wrist grab here and then I can just go straight into an arm drag. It can work off of a punch here, where I go into an arm drag position, or it can work in this particular set. So, the final piece to this set, we go block your counter. He jams it into my body, gets stuck here, I point, I bring it down, I release my grip, and I'm gonna step as I pull the James. So I end up behind him. There's a lot of clearance right here. So once I get to here, I'm gonna pivot with my right foot around, I'm gonna take my right arm, I'm gonna trace his tricep into his bicep and shoot straight up along his shoulder. Once I have that, I'm, I can let go of his left arm. I'm gonna get my hand to the back of his neck and I'm gonna rotate him around while lifting my elbow up. Nice and strong frame. And from here I have my knees, my strikes, I have takedowns. And then of course I can also go into what we call the full circle throw. So there's a connection here. I can pass him off, throw him this way so on and so forth. But from here is generally where I'll stop and then I can piece together my structure, the things that I do know. Okay, so when we bridge, it, it's, a, it's a play on block check counter or alternating hands, right? I use this metaphor a lot recently and it's like climbing rope. When you climb rope, generally you have one hand that folds into the second hand or your left and you keep going in a smooth process, right? If you constantly use your right hand Eventually, you'll overwork the right hand, you'll lose connection, and probably fall. If I use my right hand, and then my left hand goes when my right hand let goes, then I have a brief moment of disconnection. So I want to stay connected until my next hand is in position. But as I'm maintaining connection, the other one's working. So I'm alternating my hands for a smooth transition from the bottom, maybe on the ground, to the top at the end of the rope. So when you look at that in uh, bridging, the only time I can bridge is when I have one hand working and the other hand setting up. And as I pull, my body's gonna move. So I'm working to reposition as I'm still working for my hands to work around here. And as I do this, this is how I'm gonna find my way back. I can insert my left hand into the bicep, bring my right hand down, Left hand comes down, I swing it open, swing it back to my right hand, and I'm in an arm drag position. So by me doing this, I can step around, transition, double underhook, swing open, swing back, and then go back the other way. So in bridging itself, it's an extension of understanding how to navigate around the body without crossing your arms and without causing a need to stop, right? Kali is very fluid, it's very flowing, so if I have to stop and kind of hold my position, which isn't necessarily wrong, it's just I want to keep going with what's there and what I can turn it into. And that's going to require my hands to alternate, right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, one setting up, one working, one working, one setting up. And bridging can be done again if I want to or because I need to. So with that back transfer or that back bridge that we just demonstrated, there's no way that I would do that more than once. Because if I'm going to go to the other side, I'm going to the other side for a reason. Right? I'm not going to go there just because I felt like it. That's a little bit too much work in my opinion. If I felt like bridging, it would more so be from this position. I wanted to bridge here and get it over with. Right? But if I have to bridge all into the back, it's because I need a position for another technique like a takedown or a lock. And so. I'm only doing it back and forth 
to understand that I can change the, uh, the order of my hands versus setting up and working. And I can also navigate almost to a point where it's autopilot. And I don't have to think about it. My hands are just working, climbing the rope, and I'm able to transfer or bridge from position A to position B. So I know there's a lot of theory in that when it comes down to it technically. Uh, bridging is pretty simple. It's just a matter of when and why you are going to use them. So try out those block check counters with bridging. See how you can get your partner off timing and see if you can get to a position before your partner realizes it. And then that's going to create the one step ahead concept that I'm very, very fond of. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure that you comment below and let me know. Also, let me know what else you guys want to see. I have a few things that uh, I'm working on. I'm very excited to show you, but I also want to cover some topics that you're interested in. So don't be afraid. Comment below. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. If you did enjoy the video, thumbs it up. And until next time, catch you guys then.